Why do we believe in Christ? Well, because we have the Book of Mormon that goes with the Bible as another testament of Christ. Um, you know, my parents served a mission in Macon, Georgia. My dad served in Tahiti as a young man, and he always dreamed about going back to Tahiti with my mom on another mission. But by the time they got to mission age, then dad's health was bad enough that they said, no, you can't go out of the country. So they served the mission in the paradise of Macon, Georgia. And so <laughs> they went down there and they had a great experience. They loved their mission. And one of their jobs was to go and deliver copies of the Book of Mormon or the Bible to people who had called in after a TV commercial. Remember the commercials that used to come on and say, you know, call 1-800-CHANGE-YOUR-LIFE or whatever it was, I don't know. And, uh, and then people would deliver a free book to your door. Well, that was my parents' job. They would go and deliver these books. Now, my mom taught second grade for 20 years. So she just treated the whole world like they were second graders. <laughs> and, I mean, she just was always talking to everyone like they were second graders. And she would tell total strangers, we do not litter. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> it's <is> dangerous. <laughs> I mean, she just she she just treated everybody like they were just part of her classroom. So she shows up at this doorstep and she says, "Hello, we're here from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, and we brought your copy of the Book of Mormon." And the guy said, "What's that?" And she said, this is another testament of Christ. And then he said, another testament. Now remember, we're in Georgia. Yeah. Another testament. Another testament. What makes you think Christ needs another testament? He has the Bible, and that is testament enough. Then my mom didn't know what to say. <laughs> And so then my dad spoke up, and he didn't always speak up much because mom was always doing the talking. <laughs> but he spoke up and he said, how many Christian churches are there? The guy says, well, what does that have to do with anything? My dad said, I'll, I'm just trying to answer your question. How many different Christian churches are there? He says, I don't know, 10, 20, I don't know, 30. My dad said, well, according to the last report from National Geographic, depending on how you categorize a church, because many Baptist churches are claimed to be independent, he says, well, they report that there's between 60 and 90,000 different Christian churches, by far the world's most fractured faith, by far. As you look at all the major world religions, Christianity is by far the most fractured. And he says, so with that kind of confusion, 90,000 different churches, all interpreting the Bible in 90,000 different ways. This one's saying, oh, baptism is by immersion, and this one's saying, baptism is by sprinkling, and this one's saying, baptism is not essential. It's a work, and it's not essential because we're saved by grace. And this one's saying, baptism is an internal thing. It's not an ex... 90,000 different Christian churches, all interpreting the same Bible differently. This one's saying, I'm against gay marriage because it says right here in the Bible. And this one's saying, I'm for gay marriage because it says right here in the Bible. My dad says, with that kind of confusion, what makes you think Christ would need another testament to verify the truths of the Bible and to clarify the truths of the Bible? You know, one example the missionaries often use, you might remember this when you're in Alaska, they often draw a picture of an arrow saying, here's the sign, this is God telling us where to go. Then they put one nail in the sign and say, now how many ways can I spin this arrow? See, with one nail, I can turn this arrow in any direction I want it to go. But if there's another nail, the book, Bible and the Book of Mormon, then it fixes that arrow and it points us in the clear direction that God would have us go. I don't know if you've seen that before. The missionaries use that a lot in our mission. 
And I like it because it does remind us the need for two witnesses. And the Bible and the Book of Mormon become those witnesses. So why do we believe in Christ? Not just because of the Bible, but because of the Book of Mormon. Do you realize that now, in a day and age where people are starting to doubt what was in the Bible, the Book of Mormon actually verifies it. Most scholars today say Jesus never gave the Sermon on the Mount. They say, at best, it was a collection of his teachings that he gave on many different occasions. At worst, it was made up by monks in the Middle Ages. But they don't ever believe that Jesus gave the whole Sermon on the Mount as one sermon. Well, as Mormons, we're not too affected by any of that. Why? Yeah, because he gave it again, word for word, in the Americas. See, we don't have to blink for two seconds and wonder whether he gave the Sermon on the Mount, because he repeated it for the members of the church in the Americas. See, isn't that interesting? That while the world debates, we know. We know. Yeah, why do we believe? Because we have the Book of Mormon. Jesus told his disciples, Go ye into all the world. Since when did Jesus give a commandment? That he did not live himself? 